heat heat is a form of energy which produces the sensation of hotness why are some objects hotter than others the molecules in a substance are in constant vibration greater the molecular vibration greater is the heat energy in the object when the molecular vibration is less the object feels cooler the sun is the greatest source of heat and light energy on the earth we shall learn in this and next few chapters that one form of energy can be converted to another form of energy for example plants convert light energy to chemical energy of food by the process of photosynthesis in thermal electricity generating plants heat energy produced by burning fuel is further converted into electrical energy our body can sense and judge heat very quickly the feeling of warmth or coolness is a very common perception we get from our skin we can also use our fingers or tongue to sense such a perception when it is cold and we want to make our room warmer we turn on the heater or light a fire in summer when it is hot and we want to make our room cool do we add cold to the room no we take away some of the heat we say something is cold when it does not have much heat the lesser heat it has the colder it is so hot and cold are the relative terms for our understanding of heat temperature we have learned that heat is a form of energy we have also learned about hot and relatively cold objects we have to find a way to measure the difference in heat energy level if you touch a hot object and a cold object with your hand you can feel the difference however this does not give us a measure of the difference we therefore need a measure for the hotness or coldness of a body this measure of heat energy level in a body is called temperature in other words it is defined as the degree of hotness or coldness of a body the hotter the substance is the higher is its temperature for example a large container of lukewarm water has more heat in it than the tip of a burning agarbatti but the tip of burning agarbatti will have a much higher temperature than the water differences between heat and temperature heat temperature number 1 heat is a form of energy number 1 temperature is a measure of heat energy level that is degree of hotness or coldness of a body number 2 heat energy raises the temperature of a body number 2 temperature decides 
the direction of flow of heat as heat flows from a body at higher temperature to the body at lower temperature. Number 3. Heat is measured in joule and calorie. One calorie is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius at normal atmospheric pressure. 1 calorie is equal to 4.2 Joule. Joule is the SI unit of heat. Number 3. Temperature is measured in degree Celsius, degree Fahrenheit or Kelvin. Measurement of temperature. Temperature is measured with the help of a device called thermometer. Thermo means heat. Meter means scale. A thermometer contains mercury inside its glass tube which works on the principle of expansion of liquids on heating. Temperature scales. Different scales used for measuring temperature are Celsius scale, Fahrenheit scale and Kelvin scale. We generally use either Celsius scale or Fahrenheit scale in our daily life. Kelvin scale is used for scientific purposes. Celsius scale. This scale was invented by Enders Celsius in 1742. This is denoted by degree P. Degree Celsius or degree centigrade. On this scale, lower fixed point is taken as melting point of ice which is 0 degree Celsius. The upper fixed point is taken as boiling point of water which is 100 degree Celsius. The difference between these two points is divided into 100 divisions each of 1 degree Celsius. Fahrenheit scale. This scale was invented by Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit in 1724. The unit of this scale is denoted by degree F, degree Fahrenheit. On this scale, lower fixed point is 32 degree Fahrenheit, the melting point of ice, and upper fixed point is 212 degree Fahrenheit, the boiling point of water. The difference between these two points is taken as 180 divisions each of 1 degree Fahrenheit. Kelvin scale. This scale was invented by Lord Kelvin in 1848. On this scale, the lower fixed point is 273 Kelvin, the melting point of ice, and the upper fixed point is 373 Kelvin, the boiling point of water. The difference between these two points is taken as 100 divisions each of 1 Kelvin. Correct ways of writing units. Symbols of units named after scientists are written in capital but when written in words they are written in small letters. For example, Kelvin, K. The symbols of units are written in small letters such as kg 
not kg except name of scientists the unit or the symbol is never written in plural measurement of temperature on different scales the scales that are commonly used are degree celsius or centigrade degree c kelvin k and fahrenheit degree f reference points scales reference readings difference of marking between two reference points number 1 melting point of ice degree celsius 0 degree celsius kelvin 273 kelvin degree fahrenheit 32 degree fahrenheit number 2 boiling point of water degree celsius 100 degree celsius 0 degree to 100 degree 100 divisions kelvin 373 kelvin 273 degree to 373 degree 100 divisions degree fahrenheit 212 degree fahrenheit 32 degree to 212 degree 180 divisions conversion of different temperature scales the three temperature scales can be converted to one another from the following relation c upon 100 is equal to f minus 32 upon 180 is equal to k minus 273 upon 100 conversion of celsius scale into kelvin scale and vice versa c upon 100 is equal to k minus 273 upon 100 thus we can say c is equal to k minus 273 k is equal to c plus 273 conversion of celsius scale into fahrenheit scale and vice versa c upon 100 is equal to f minus 32 upon 180 c is equal to 5 upon 9 f minus 32 f is equal to 9c upon 5 plus 32 examples number 1 convert 40 degree celsius into degree fahrenheit and kelvin 40 degree celsius is equal to 40 multiplied by 9 upon 5 plus 32 is equal to 72 plus 32 is equal to 104 degree fahrenheit also 40 degree celsius is equal to 40 plus 273 is equal to 313 kelvin number 2 convert 95 degree fahrenheit into degree celsius 95 degree fahrenheit is equal to 95 minus 32 multiplied by 5 upon 9 is equal to 63 multiplied by 5 upon 9 is equal to 35 degree celsius types of thermometer number 1 clinical thermometer most of us use a thermometer in our home to measure the body temperature when we have fever such a thermometer used for measuring the temperature of a human body is called clinical thermometer the doctors use this thermometer to measure 
the temperature of patients. The clinical thermometer is a long, narrow and uniform tube of glass. There is a glass bulb at one end of the tube and the other end is sealed. The glass bulb contains mercury. This space in the bulb extends into a uniform graduated capillary tube from 35 degrees Celsius to 42 degrees Celsius. This is due to the fact that the temperature of a human body never goes beyond these temperatures. You can also see a constriction or kink in the glass tube just above the bulb containing mercury. Most clinical thermometers have two scales printed on them. These are Celsius and Fahrenheit scales. Celsius scales range from 35 degrees Celsius to 42 degrees Celsius, while Fahrenheit scales range from 94 degree Fahrenheit to 108 degree Fahrenheit. In these scales, the normal body temperature is taken as 37 degree Celsius or 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. Number 2. Maximum and Minimum Thermometer This thermometer is specially designed to record the maximum and minimum temperature of an area during 24 hours of the day. You would have heard on radio or watched in TV news the reporting of maximum and minimum temperatures of major cities. The daily newspapers also give the temperature readings of your town. Number 3. Digital Thermometer These thermometers have an added advantage as they do not use mercury which is a toxic substance. Their readings are accurate. They are easy to use and there is no fear of breakage as they have a plastic body. Number 4. Laboratory Thermometer This thermometer is commonly used in laboratory to measure the temperature of boiling water and ice. It is much longer than the clinical thermometer and does not have a kink in the glass tube. It has a calibration of minus 10 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius. Care in using laboratory thermometer. Always keep the thermometer vertical while taking readings. Bulb of the thermometer should be dipped in the substance of which temperature is to be taken and not touching the sides or bottom of the container. Reading of the temperature should be taken while the thermometer is still immersed in the substance. Keep your eyes at the level of mercury and then take the reading. Differences between clinical mercury and laboratory thermometer. Clinical mercury thermometer, laboratory thermometer. Number one, it is smaller in size. Number one, it is larger in size. Number two, the range of temperature allowed to be measured is 35 degrees Celsius to 
42 degree Celsius. Number 2. The range of temperature allowed to be measured is generally minus 10 degree Celsius to 110 degree Celsius. Number 3. There is a constriction which does not allow mercury column to fall on its own. Number 3. There is no such constriction so the mercury level falls as soon as it is taken out of the substance whose temperature is to be measured. Number 4. One needs to give few jerks for the mercury to fall below 37 degrees Celsius for the next use. Number 4. The mercury level falls to the room temperature on its own. Effects of heat. Heat can have many effects. When an object is heated, the temperature increases. Heat can cause change of state of an object. For example, a solid changes into liquid and a liquid changes into gas on heating. When an object is heated, it expands. In other words, heat can cause expansion. The increase in size of an object on heating is called thermal expansion. Expansion in solids. A solid expands on heating. It shows expansion in length, area and volume. Some applications of expansion in solids are given below. Gaps are left between rail lines to allow for expansion in summer months. Telephone wires sag more in summer due to expansion. In winter, they contract and become taut. Metal caps on bottles can be loosened by dipping it in warm water. Expansion in liquids. Liquids expand more than solids as they are comparatively loosely packed. For example, mercury thermometers are useful because the liquid expands much more than the glass tube. If the glass tube also expanded equally, the thermometer reading would be meaningless. Expansion in gases. Gases expand much more than solids and liquids. For example, in hot air balloons, the air inside expands due to heating, which leads to the balloon rising up. Transfer of heat. In this section, we will study how heat is transferred in solid, liquid, and gas. We know that heat always flows from the body at higher temperature to the body at lower temperature. This flow or transfer of heat continues to take place till both bodies attain the same temperature. The flow of heat stops when the temperature difference is zero. The bodies are said to be in a state of thermal equilibrium. For example, if a glass of hot milk is kept in cold water for some time, it becomes cooler or less hot. It is because heat flows from milk to water as 
milk in glass was at higher temperature. After some time, we notice that water becomes warm. When milk and water both attain the same temperature, then the flow of heat stops. Mechanism of heat transfer. Heat transfer takes place by the three ways. Transfer of heat. Conduction. The process of transfer of heat energy in solids from molecules to molecules by being in touch without their actual movement. Convection. The process of transfer of heat energy in fluids in which the heated molecules move away from the source of heat and cold molecules move towards the source of heat. Radiation. The process of transfer of heat energy without heating the intervening material medium. Conduction. If you hold a steel rod from one end and put the other end over a candle flame, very soon you will find that the rod at your end becomes warm and soon it becomes too hot to hold. Heat moves in solids by conduction. The process of conduction differs greatly in metals and non-metals. In metals, conduction of heat and electricity depends on the presence of free electrons. When a metal rod is heated at one end, figure A, the free electrons present in it begin to move faster. These electrons drift towards the cooler part of the metal where their energy is transferred by collision to the metal atoms at that end. Figure B. Simultaneously, the slow-moving colder electrons drift in the reverse direction. This movement is haphazard enough so as not to create an electrical current. To a very small extent, heat is transmitted in metal by vibration of atoms also. This energy is transmitted in very small energy packets called photons. Figure C. In non-metals which have almost no free electrons, energy is conducted entirely by vibration of atoms, that is by photons. The efficiency of this process is so poor that we call these materials as non-conductors. Conduction is thus the transfer of heat through solid materials without actual movement of the particles of the material. Heat tends to travel through the material from the hotter part to the colder part as the molecules are in contact. How does conduction of heat occur? As discussed above, heat transfer in metals occur by the movement of free electrons and to a small extent by collision of vibrating molecules. These molecules collide with neighboring molecules and some heat energy is passed on to the next molecules. These in turn begin to vibrate faster and pass on the heat energy farther away from the flame. In this way, 
heat energy is transferred by contact from a molecule at higher temperature to the lower temperature through the entire length of the rod although each individual molecule remains in its original location heat transfer by only molecular vibration is relatively inefficient this is the only means of heat transfer in insulators as they do not have free electrons normal molecular vibration when rod is at room temperature molecules vibrate strongly at end being heated and pin falls as wax melts strong molecular vibration spreads towards cooler portion and more pins fall as heat spreads in the metal rod good and bad conductors substances that allow heat to pass through them are called good conductors for example all metals are good conductors of heat the substances that do not allow heat to pass through them are called bad conductors or insulators for example wood plastic straw etc heat transfer by the mechanism of molecular vibration takes place in all substances but the rate of heat transfer is different for different substances in the case of non metals the heat transfer is slow in general terms it can be said that metals are good conductors of heat and non metals are poor conductors of heat convection convection is the process of transfer of heat energy in which the molecules of a fluid water or air move from hotter region to cooler region carrying heat with them the colder molecules of the medium move towards the heat source and the process continues how does convection occur convection can take place in fluids water and air because the molecules are free to move about when a fluid is heated it expands becomes less dense and therefore rises carrying heat along with it the cold fluid being denser sinks down to the heat source this cold fluid then gets heated and moves upward this process continues and heat is transferred in the entire volume of fluid through movement of fluid molecules these movement of fluid molecules are called convection currents radiation radiation is the mode of transfer of heat energy from a hot body to a cold body without needing any medium and without being absorbed by the space between hot and cold bodies radiation is the fastest mode of heat transfer when radiation is absorbed by an object its temperature rises how does radiation occur the transfer of heat by radiation 
does not require any medium like air, water or any other material. The transfer of heat occurs by photons which are packets of electromagnetic waves. The energy so radiated is called radiant energy. All hot objects emit radiant energy. When this radiant energy falls on other objects, it is partly reflected and partly absorbed. The part that is absorbed increases the energy level of the objects which raises their temperature. At a given temperature, a body radiates most heat energy. When its surface is dull black and least when its surface is highly polished. Summary of Heat Transfer Mechanisms Serial Number Conduction Convection Radiation Number 1 Heat transfer is between a hotter body and a colder body. It takes place in solids, liquids and gases. Convection is the process of transfer of heat energy in liquids and gases. This is the process of transfer of heat energy without the need of a medium. All hot objects give away heat by radiation. Number 2. Heat transfer takes place on contact by movement of free electrons. The hot molecules go up and away from the heat source to coldest region at the top. Cold molecules move to the heat source thus setting up a convection cycle. No material medium is required. Heat is carried as wave packets of energy called photons which travel in straight lines. Number 3. Conduction does not occur in vacuum. Convection does not occur in vacuum and in solids as the molecules are not free to move. No medium is required so it can occur in vacuum. Number 4. Heat transfer can occur in any direction from hot to cold body. Heat transfer occurs along with the path of convection current from heat source to coldest region at the top. Heat transfer occurs when photons are met with an obstacle. Number 5. Conduction is a relatively slow process. The process is faster than conduction but slower than radiation. Radiation is the fastest way of heat transfer in terms of efficiency. Applications of Conduction Number 1. Cooking utensils are made of metals and its alloys so that heat from flame is conducted to the food inside efficiently. Some utensils even have copper bases as it is better conductor than steel or aluminium. The handle 
of most utensils are made of wood or plastics which are poor conductors of heat. Number 2. We use woolen clothes in winter and feel warm because air is trapped between the wool fiber. As air is a bad conductor of heat, the body heat does not flow to the cold surroundings. So, we feel warm. Number 3. Two thin woolen blankets are warmer than one thick woolen blanket because the air trapped between the blankets act as insulator, thus not allowing heat from our body to flow out. Number 4. We use insulators like brick and mud when we build houses. Thus, during summer, the heat outside is not conducted into the house. Similarly, in winters, warm rooms do not lose heat to the surroundings. Number 5. Bad conductors have a wide applications. Double glazing in windows reduces heat loss because of poorly conducting layer of air between two sheets of glass as seen in air conditioned locomotive coaches. Number 6. Walking barefoot on a stone floor in winter makes our feet feel cold as the stone floor being a good conductor of heat, conducts away heat from our feet quickly. So, we prefer to spread woolen carpets on floors during winters. Carpet being bad conductor of heat does not allow heat of our feet to escape. Hence, we feel comfortable. Applications of convection. Number 1. At places on the coast in summer time, it is noticeable that a breeze generally blows from the sea during the day, while at night the direction of the wind is reversed. These breezes are local convection currents. Land gets heated faster and cools down faster than water. During the day, the land is heated by the sun to a higher temperature than the sea. Air over the land is therefore heated, so it expands and rises while Cooler air blows in from the sea to take its place. This is called sea breeze. At night, land cools rapidly as compared to sea water. Warmer air rises from the sea and is replaced by colder air from the land. So, the air convection currents is reversed. This is called land breeze. Number 2. Car engines are cooled by convection currents set in water pipes around the combustion chamber. Number 3. Smoke and hot gases produced in factories escape through tall chimneys due to convection currents. Applications of radiation Number 1. Cooling devices as car radiators are painted black 
so as to have cooling effect by radiating heat. Number two, room heaters have polished and shining surfaces to reflect most of the heat by radiation produced by its heating element. Number three, brightly polished objects retain their internal heat energy for a long period. Hot beverages stay hot longer in such polished pots. Number four, we feel comfortable wearing light colored clothes in summer because light colored clothes absorb less amount of radiant heat of the sun than dark clothes. The reverse applies in winter. Most winter clothes have dark shades so they absorb heat radiations more efficiently. Number five, buildings which are white washed or painted in light colors stay cool in summer. Add vection. Add vection is horizontal transportation as the inherent property in a fluid that happens due to the movement of very large quantity of the fluid. For example, warm ocean water carrying a lot of heat keeps moving across the oceans of the world. The weather in North India, for example, becomes very warm when it gets wind from the west. This transfer of heat is by advection. Advection occurs because there are currents in fluids, hence it does not happen in solids as they are rigid. The horizontal movement of air and water causes advection in nature and influences our weather and climate relatively quickly. Some common observations. Number one. Cooling coils of refrigerators and air conditioners are made of copper because it conducts away heat quickly. Copper is one of the best conductors of heat. Number two, birds puff up their feathers in winter to cover themselves with a coat of air which acts as an insulator as the feather creates thousands of air pockets. Air, as we know, is a bad conductor of heat, so the birds do not lose body heat. Number three, greenhouse. Greenhouse is made of glass sheets. It is used to grow plants in cold climates. The sun's radiations easily pass through these glass sheets. These rays are absorbed by the earth and the plants inside the greenhouse, which in turn raise the temperature of air near the ground. In addition, warm objects inside the greenhouse radiate back long wave infrared rays. The heat is retained as these rays cannot penetrate the glass walls. The temperature inside the greenhouse thus becomes high enough to support plant growth. Number four. Factory roofs are painted with shining aluminium paint. The bright surface reduces heat loss in winter and absorbs 
less heat in summer months. This helps in keeping the inside temperature moderate. Number 5. Thermos Flask A thermos flask keeps drinks hot or cold close to its temperature for longer period of time by minimizing heat loss or heat gain. A. It consists of a double walled glass shell having a vacuum between the walls. Both the walls are silvered on the vacuum side. Heat cannot enter or leave the inner flask by conduction or convection through the vacuum. B. A very small quantity of heat can be gained or lost by the flask by radiation, but this is reduced to minimum because of silvering. A little heat is transmitted through this glass wall at neck and the cork stopper. Signs in the vicinity On a cold evening, a bowl of hot soup looks more inviting because of the heat it emits out. However, what you see is not steam. These are droplets of water that condenses when the temperature is low. The same phenomenon happens when you exhale on a cold day. Temperature difference in the layers of air create convection currents. Birds like eagles or migratory birds are trained to take advantage of these air currents and fly by spending very little energy. Crackling noise in frying. Cooking oils boil at high temperatures. Mustard oil boils at about 152 degrees Celsius while olive oil boils at 299 degrees Celsius. When a drop of water falls on hot oil, it sinks. Water being heavier than oil. The water drop converts to steam immediately with a huge volume expansion causing the characteristic noise. We have learnt that upon heating, liquids expand more than solids. So, in summer, if the fuel gauge of your car shows E, it will drive a lesser distance than what it could in winter with the same fuel gauge reading. This is because the fuel will expand more than fuel tank during summer and has an increased volume for the same mass of fuel. Panting in dogs is a cooling mechanism. It is essential because dogs do not have an effective system of sweat glands like humans. Dogs cool their bodies using the evaporation of moisture from the mouth and tongue and by exchanging the hot air of their lungs with cooler external air. 